So our former EPA administrator left the set saying, oh, I'm sure Mike has got something to say about that. <laughs> you think it's a good idea to leave the Paris Accord? Well, I think that we don't need an accord to, be, to, con to continue to be a world leader in reducing carbon emissions. We're doing it on our own. We did it without Kyoto. And we can do it without Paris. We don't need a, we don't need a True. globalist policy. That was policy. part of the conversation right. that we had. That we can still, you know, <clears throat> be aware of the uh, of the environment. We don't need a globalist policy, as, right. if, as if what we have a proprietary air and atmosphere. No, we we have a conscious enough society and government <laughs> that wants to reduce carbon emissions, and we're doing it. What and about the why, world? Well, the world can do what the world wants to do, but why should America, what Donald Trump is, why should America fund the world getting to that point? We'll take care of ourselves. You take care well, of yourself. There's a couple of three billion dollars that we still, you know, when it comes to when it comes to the, uh, the big well, picture, it's it's, 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 a, it's a it's a little bit. It's not just the money; it's the sovereignty. You know, just like just like the Brits didn't want uh, somebody in, in the Euro capital telling them what to do in their country. We don't need people in a European socialist countries telling us what to do with regard to climate. We, we're very good on our own. Thank you very much. All right then. Uh, we have other stuff that you want yeah, to it discuss. Ties, and it ties right I mean, in. we could go at this all day, yeah, but no. I just the the. the you know, by the way, if, the, if if Barack Obama wasn't engaged in that in that whole climate deal, I mean, Donald Trump, half of Donald Trump, what Donald Trump does is do a race with Barack Obama. Barack Obama yep. did. Yep. And if you're going to tell me the president's principled and educated on this, I don't know. I'll eat my hat. I don't know. Or I'll eat yours. But Obama anyway. didn't do it the right way either. It should have been a Senate treaty, ratified uh, treaty. Anyway, okay. so this all ties into our family prosperity. All right. When the one thing all that, that was, does. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, because the one thing that's missing from all their discussions you heard was how this impacts real people and real families, right? There's this mythical, I don't think the professor can prove that there's catastrophic climate change coming. There's this mythical problem we've created of this catastrophe. Maybe temperatures are rising, but is it a catastrophe? What we do know Go that's real. Go show your charts, quick. Yeah, what we do know is that it's driving all these crazy energy policies like the carbon tax, like energy mandates, are driving up energy rates on families and businesses Go to the charts that are driving people out of this state. Do you know that in those 12 year period, we've lost the equivalent of 11 cities and towns worth of people to net migration loss. The cost of energy and other taxes and regulations are so high on businesses and families that they're, they're fleeing our state. 80,000 people, that's 11 of our smaller cities and towns, gone. And that's what Rhode Island would look like on the right without those 11 cities and towns. This has got to stop. Of course, they These came from all over the state. I understand yes, your yes, point, yes. but that, that's yeah. a creative way of describing yeah. the, the population <laughs> shift. But hmm. Well, okay. it's because of progressive policies like you just heard advocated for with your prior guests. You, you take it with energy, you take it with welfare, you take it with public sector unions, you take all these things and add them together, and it's way too expensive to live or Climate to build a and career. welfare come from the, Listen, you and I are pretty much in line on the welfare stuff. Are you telling me that climate and welfare come from the same bag of tricks? Yeah, it's all about a government-centric solution to our problems, yes. Uh, and 11 towns wiped off the map. Yeah. That map. So that's the uh, new way of... Of suggesting the the population decrease, well, it's, it's, a, it's a way of, I guess, describing it. What's the uh, and to tie it into current events, then rather than philosophical. And we're forty fifth still in the family prosperity index. Yeah, forty fifth in pro family prosperity, forty eighth on our jobs and opportunity index, fiftieth business climate in the country. There's a reason for that. So I'm asking lawmakers. Yeah, give them the, the one minute pitch. Go ahead. <laughs> don't you, you've got budget deficits? Please cut the spending. If you, if you try to raise more taxes and fees, you're, you're going to make that out-migration problem even worse. You like the car tax reduction? Hey, we like any tax reduction if it's paid for properly. It's got to be paid for by spending cuts, not by increases in taxes or fees somewhere else. So we don't know how it's going to be paid for yet. That's what we're saying. Don't increase other taxes and fees. Any kind of tax cut is good. We need it in this state if we're not going to be the bottom fifth in the yeah, country. I, don't, I think the speaker has been has, has decided not to target cuts because he doesn't need people lining up on his door while he's trying to get this car tax passed. But you're right. We need to watch to see whether or not uh, it's paid for on the wrong side. You raise taxes, you're going to increase our out-migration problem. All right. And the moral of the story on being 45th in family prosperity index is? Well, the unemployment rate is such a terrible indicator of prosperity. It doesn't care how much you make, how many hours you work a week, whether you're earning what you're worth. 
just the fact you can check a box I put a few hours in does, isn't family prosperity. This index is the broadest measure of overall family well-being ever conducted on a state-by-state -state basis, and we're 45th. Forget the unemployment rate. It's a poor indicator of prosperity. The unemployment rate. Our leaders are trying to tell us that everything's good because the unemployment rate is down. People are leaving our state. So Other again, indicators say we're not doing well. But what, So what, if there was a single indicator, you're telling me there isn't, an index is better. But right. what's a better single indicator? Well, there is no really one. That's what we're trying to say. You can't judge prosperity by any one measure. Now, this looks at 60 different measures and puts them all together into one index, and we're 45th on that. Demographic, social, economic, cultural indexes. When you look at all these things mm -hmm. that families care about, the broader we tend to look at things, the, the less well Rhode Island does. All right. Got to do better. Got to do better. Gotta Broadly. Do better. Broadly. <laughs> we'll be right back to wrap up. Thanks. We actually have a couple more minutes left with Mike here. Uh, thoughts on this whole budget process thing going on? Yeah, can, I think following up on what I was mentioned earlier, we, we put out a statement a couple weeks ago the that said... The Prosperity uh, Institute? Yeah, our center, that the budget is the enemy of the people. All right, and what I mean by that is... Say that slowly. The budget is the enemy of the people. Our state budget is the enemy of the people of Rhode Island. Here's why. If, if, if the taxes and fees and regulations required by that budget are making us 45th in that and 48th in that and 50th in that, then, then that budget should be pared back. But whenever we see a plan, even the speaker's car tax plan is being implemented more slowly. Our sales tax plan won't be given real serious consideration because it might impact the budget. Well, if the budget is the problem, we should be happy to reconfigure it. We should be happy to make the budget work for Rhode Islanders instead of working against Rhode Islanders. So the whole concept of the budget is the king, we have to preserve our budget at all costs, why would we want to do that when it's failing us so miserably? What's the alternative? Cutting it, cutting it back. Giving back, letting people keep more of their hard-earned money, taking the regulatory oh, yeah, shackles off you were, businesses. I thought maybe you were leading toward the idea that we wouldn't work with a budget. I no, know. no, no, we need a budget, but we, we shouldn't say that because there's a budget cut required for the speaker's car tax, for instance, or our sales tax idea, for instance, that we shouldn't do it because we'd have to cut the budget. We should want to cut the budget because the budget is killing us. Okay. Make sense? I, I think I... <laughs> I think I get that. Okay, I think Appreciate you do. It. Uh, go to the Center for Freedom and Prosperity uh, website, which we list on foxprovidence.com, so you can read more of the data. Thank you, my friend. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Uh, Three o'clock on the radio tomorrow on WPRL. See you then. Good night.